Hey everyone, my name is Danilo Petrovic. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Janis Kuda. I'm Evgeny Donskoy. I'm Henry Laksan. I'm Peter Turepko, and, and you're listening to the Game to Love podcast. Hey, welcome back once again, tennis fans. Here we are. It is the Djokovic saga, it would seem, continuing for another day. And we are joined today by a very good friend, a journalist of Deutsche Welle and author of Even the Defeats. It is Mr. John Silk. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> ben, I'm I'm honoured that you have mentioned the book. I'm uh, I'm disappointed it's not I'm just it's what it's not at hand, but uh, but thank you for that. No yeah, thanks for that wonderful intro. How how are you guys doing? I guess we're here to talk about Cam Norrie and how bad his ATP cup was, right? Is that's what we're here to talk about? That's on the next one, John. I'm, so, I'm a bit disappointed Ben didn't mention sort of a third member of uh, Game to Love as well because he has done several appearances on Game to Love and a great addition to the show. Thank Today you, we're going to be talking about the Djokovic saga, as Ben said. There's been more developments. There's more happening all the time. I, for one, couldn't even sleep. I was up at 5 a.m. refreshing Twitter, having a little look, see what's happening next. The big news is going to be we'll wait until Monday to find out the court hearing. Um, but I'll... I'll leave it over. Take uh, leave you with John to give you a good overview of what's happened in the last twelve to twenty four hours. Perfect, JG, because that is my sort of time span. The last twelve to twenty four hours. Um, basically, about twenty four hours ago, we had some information at least come out regarding. Uh, well, actually, JG, maybe you should actually begin the poll by telling us uh, why is it that Djokovic thought he had an exemption. Yeah, so the exemption is based, like a lot of people were saying, on the fact that he had uh, tested positive for COVID in the last six months. He believed that was the, the correct grounds to be able to get an exemption. Tennis Australia has kind of confirmed that and allowed that to be the case. Uh, they've since kind of retracted that, especially with the sort of the federal government clamping down on it. There's so much to get into. Um, but the big reason on what was Novak Djokovic's exemption was the fact that he was filing under having the antibodies for COVID, considering he'd had it in the last six months, which is scientifically correct. We can't uh, go against the science. He would be pretty much immune uh, under 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 the scientific rules. Mm -hmm. So that's perfect because that kind of leads me into the, the, the news that broke just under 24 hours ago, um, uh, adding weight to what JG just said there which was that um, it became, we became aware of the fact that Tennis Australia had been written to twice by Greg Hunt, the health secretary in Australia, had been written to and told twice that that would not count as far as they were concerned, as far as the federal government concerned. And don't forget, it's the federal government, the Commonwealth, basically, that issued the visa, and it's also the federal government and the border force that decide um, uh, basically decide uh, whether Djokovic or anyone who, who uses that as an excuse can go into the country. And as far as they're concerned, and they're also their medical guys, if you like, the medical thing, which I think is called Atagi or Agati, excuse my, um, the, the an acronym there, but that's the guys that the, they got. Now, those have had nothing to do with uh, Djokovic and the panel that have decided on Tennis for Australia's behalf. And the, the one doctor, although some people are saying two, that have suggested um, that uh, Djokovic has uh, obviously tested uh, positive in the last six months and to verify that. But more importantly, the uh, Greg Hunt told Craig Tiley, and we're going <laughs> to arguably talk about Craig Tiley more than Novak Djokovic on this podcast. Uh, he was told twice, uh, um, Craig Tiley, in the last few months that you could not get into Australia under the condition of um, of testing positive in the last six months. You could only enter if you obviously were fully vaxxed with one of the recognized vaccines, um, most of which we know about, or if you'd had an allergic reaction to obviously taking one dose in the past or perhaps another vaccine or an acute medical um, reason. But we, we now know that those are none of the reasons and the reason that Djokovic felt confident that he could get into Australia was because of the positive test. When he was asked 
by the border force people because don't forget there was that period that he was in the air and that was kind of when we started to realize that there may be a problem because the australian government were fairly firm with i mean uh the prime minister scott morrison and there's plenty to say about him i know in a political sense but he said um that if he doesn't pass our you know rules for entering the country actually he said he'll be on the next plane home which obviously hasn't been the case and he's been given a, a you know a few more days to to try and legally challenge this so that's kind of what happened about 24 hours ago now in the hours that followed that we then saw certain scenes in serbia and belgrade yesterday afternoon yesterday evening with uh, Djokovic's father and his mother as well, giving a press conference. His mother speaks very good English, by the way, and she was explaining the the hotel situation, if you like, that Djokovic is in. They both and many others have suggested, and also the Serbian president have all said basically things such as he's being held captive. What follows that is then when Australia is waking up to this information this morning or there the morning and our late night, if you like, last night, was Australia said that he's not being held captive. And in fact, Karen Andrews, the home affairs woman said, no, he can get on a plane anytime he wants and goes home. So he's not being yep. held prisoner here. Um, uh, but he wants to enter our country, just like it would be, to be fair, for someone from Latin America or someone from Asia or someone from Africa who wanted to enter Serbia, by the way. They couldn't just enter without a, 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 you know, a visa, for example. So that's what she said. Um, and then this morning, and this is a, always an evolving news story, and there's even stuff coming out in the last two, sort of few minutes just before we go live, it will come to in a second. We then got um, this morning, or in the last few hours, we've now got a bit of a clearer picture. Craig Tiley talked about 26 applications for an exemption, of which he said, I think, a handful were granted. Um, now we think we've got a much, or at least we've got a figure of three. Now that figure may expand. So don't, 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 you know, come at me in a few days saying, well, actually it was five or it was 10, but actually what we do know for sure is that there are three individuals amongst the 26 applications that were granted an exemption, Djokovic being one of them, uh, a doubles player. And I, excuse my pronunciation here, but Renata Voracova, a, um, Czech doubles tennis player number 81 i think in the world for doubles but she did play in a tournament even yesterday now she is one of the people that got an exemption however we are now led to believe that she has actually been um contacted and also is now in the hotel with djokovic uh jg i think you said to me that you believe that she is not planning on appealing and will return home is that right I have seen reports that that's what's going to be okay. happening, but let's wait let's, and see. If she's still yeah, in the same see. hotel, we don't yeah. know. Um, that's fair enough. Yeah. Uh, listen, it is a complete mess, isn't it? The government allowing someone in who's then played tennis in a warm-up event to then be deported is shambolic. They need yeah. There needs to be repercussions. And this is what makes me think that Djokovic has a, a stronger case than what he did have prior. Because if they're making that them kind of mistakes where someone's actually on the same terms as Djokovic, been allowed in... Is it just all a big political stance from the government there using him as a name? Because they didn't use the doubles player. No, oh. I think I think there's this. Sorry, sorry, Ben, I'll, I'll definitely right, come to you in a second. No, um, I, um, I, I absolutely I, I think you're right. But I do think in a way them now saying come and come to the hotel, please, ASAP, that that actually in a way um you know maybe that maybe they're already anticipating the way the law lawyers are going to go with this and by the way the third individual um is uh an what they've called an official now i have no idea that's a very flexible word that could even be a coach to be honest with you i, I that's an unusual term for a coach but who knows it could be a member of stuff but it could be another tennis official it could be someone from another association i don't know but whoever that official is whoever that individual is apparently they have since left the country yeah Shocking right. though, isn't it? I mean, the fact that this has been allowed to happen and the play out the way it actually has, there's just so many people who are just going to have to now speak up and or just actually, there, there could be some resignations, I think. I think that this has been such a mess and someone has to be culpable for the whole thing. Uh, I don't think it's just going to be one person though. I think there's probably going to be multiple people. There's probably going to be a bit of a shuffle around within their association because how have they allowed 
this to happen on such a massive scale. Uh, this this isn't just like Mickey Mouse stuff that's going on right now. This is the world's in a global pandemic, and this is one of the biggest sporting events uh, in the world. And they've and allowed this to happen. And there's no excuse, Ben, to get caught off guard. I mean, no, we were talking. No. They could have watched Game to Love a month ago, and they could have had a pretty <laughs> good idea that this was going to happen. And they could have watched our three different viewpoints on on jo- uh, Djokovic's va- vaccination status. Yes. But, but on a serious, <laughs> a serious point, you know, this has been coming for months. And as soon as yeah. it was October, okay, when Australia was like, listen, you are not coming in unless you're fully vaccinated, okay? Exactly. Now, at that point, there was actually no mention about exemptions. It was all about, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's now, not to the to the general wider public, Craig Tiley, uh, the chief executive of, of Tennis Australia, starts mentioning exemptions, okay? Now, you might ask where I'm getting that from. I'm getting that from uh, a guy who, a journalist who works for the Age newspaper, whose name escapes me right now, but he did an excellent podcast, by the way, an audio podcast with um, uh, Ben Rothenberg. And Ben Rothenberg tweeted about that about 6 a.m. this morning. Uh, say again? Is his name Paul? Paul something? Could be. I did mention him earlier. But anyway, there's, if you yep. go to Ben Rothenberg about 6 a.m., and Ben Rothenberg is yep. over this. He's in Melbourne as well. He even Ben Rothenberg went to, uh, to Djokovic's hotel. Anyway, they did a great half an hour chat. And so he said, uh, from his sources and the age, by the way, newspaper and Australian newspaper have been really good at covering some of the stuff and getting all this stuff quickly and early and accurately, which is basically the, the nutshell for journalism. You can't get much better than that. And uh, he got this in, uh, information and it seems to be fairly accurate, which is that Craig Tiley was starting to talk about exemptions in November. And this kind of caught one or two people off guard. And we do know come December, about 10 days ago, uh, a guy quits. Uh, a very key guy in the whole pr- the procedure, a guy called McDowell, mm. Tom McDowell, and his LinkedIn profile says something about biosecurity protocols for each and functional area uh, regarding the Australian Ocean. He quits 10 days ago. Now, I'm not going to go into too much details as to the speculation behind that, but it is very, very odd for a guy to quit 10 days before his only job of the year. As I said to you guys before, it's like Santa quitting on the 23rd of December. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it got, looks very got... suspicious. I think it's not a coincidence. That's got to no. be something to do with it. This mess up's been huge. Uh, bringing you up to like, the most recent thing, the big story what's just happened as we're speaking, Novak Djokovic has broken his silence. We have heard from him, the man himself, uh, and a post he's put out on Instagram from inside the quarantine hotel. And this is what it reads. Um, He wrote it in Serbian. I think there's a little bit of English as well. But in essence, this is what he said. Uh, Thank you to the people around the world for your continuous support. I can feel it and it is greatly appreciated. Yeah, Um, it's nice to hear from him. I'm sure probably people would have wanted a few more words. His wife actually came out first and released a, a post. Obviously, this is their Christmas, isn't it? I believe so. Yeah. I, I think that that's the, the, one of the reasons that she came out. Yes, yeah, she said it's Christmas today for us. My wishes are for everyone to be healthy, happy, safe, and together with families. We wish uh, we are all together today, but my consolation is at least that we are healthy and we will grow from this experience. So she's just trying to push some positive energy out there into the atmosphere which is nice to see. There's not anything negative in her. But yeah. I I, this, I, I feel for her a bit in all of this because she's probably getting hounded as much as uh, anybody around the whole Djokovic saga. I'm sure wanting to know, because she's probably spoken to him, I'm sure, uh, ever since he's had his mobile phone back. So she's probably the main person to go to for information. So at least she's keeping, keeping her calm in this and has released a nice statement there. So, shall we? Well, have you got anything to say about Djokovic's one? Is it a little bit? Yeah, no, I think it's a good statement he's made. Um, at least we've heard from him. It's just been so crazy what's happening. Yeah, um, I think I think Djokovic can't really probably talk too much. Um, right now, he's probably probably before the, been... before the court case, he's limited exactly. with what he can say. The hearing on Monday, yeah. So, I, I imagine that. He's keeping his counsel and, and 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 probably been told that's probably the best thing to do. And I, I imagine once that decision has been made, then he can pretty much talk freely whether he has to stay or not. But um, at the moment, I guess he just wants to express his thanks for the support, which is why it's as succinct as it is. Yeah, the people yeah. outside his uh, hotel as well. There's been like quite a 
like a band of brothers, isn't it? All out there with their Serbian fa- flags dancing and sort of like rejoicing, trying to get some positive energy to him whilst he's alone in a hotel room. So I think it's quite interesting the 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 difference in the nature of the Serbians in Australia outside the hotel. Who's he, who are, I <laughs> yeah. mean, maybe it's a weather thing as well. Let's not forget they can dance around <laughs> and enjoy it in their t-shirt and shorts, etc., or or whatever. Uh, whereas in Serbia, the 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 the, the um. The atmosphere is somewhat more tense, let's say. Yeah, yeah is let's this move being... on to some other tweets, Ben. Yeah, let's move on. Okay, we'll go. We've got to... a lot to get for us. Yes, so we've we got do. a lot of players reacting as well to the news. Um, prior to sort of today, there's not been many players really sharing no. their support for Jokic. We had Tennis no. Sangren as sort of the first one I saw. He was very vocal in his support. Another unvaccinated player who he didn't go down the exemption route. Instead, he just opted not to, to withdraw from the Australian Open. You've got Pas- Pospisil here, who mm. obviously heads the sort of PTP uh, Players uh, Foundation with Djokovic. They're sort of, what's it called? The um, what's Players what Council. The Players Council, yep. Mm. Um, and he's, he's just right here. Despite the controversy of the last 30 plus hours, crazy when you think how many, it's going to just keep going, <laughs> isn't it, until Monday. That yeah. count's going to keep going up. Uh, my fellow player, co-founder and proud Serbian, I wish him all Orthodox believers safety and good health on their Christmas Eve. Stay strong, brother. So there's yeah. some support there for Pospisil. Uh, there's another one as well from John Isner. I don't know if you've got I that one. I think that one's this. No, it's John Silk. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Same <laughs> thing. We've got Big We're John and Little servants. John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've got. Yeah. Um, yeah. But let's go to Big John first. Uh, what on. Novak's going through right now is not right. There's no justification for the treatment he's receiving. He followed the rules, was allowed to enter Australia, and now he's being detained against his his own will. This is such a shame. The big thing we need to keep reiterating on this podcast, he was given the green light and the go-ahead to go to Australia from Tennis Australia that he was able to go there under these rules of having an exemption. He's got there, that's been revoked, and that is not on. You can't give someone the green light to be going there and then say, oh, you've got to to go home now. It's just not fair. It's not the way you treat humans. It's not the way you treat uh, Novak Djokovic, of all people. I agree, but of course, Tennis Australia, as much as Craig Tiley would like to think otherwise, are not running the country. I don't recall <laughs> Craig Tiley getting elected Prime Minister of, of Australia, and that's the problem. That's also part of the problem with the, some of the documents that he showed were all had Tennis Australia um, at the top of them, basically, you know, all the letterheads. I mean, I'd love yeah. to go there with fucking... With, Excuse me. With um, <laughs> with GTL, GTL letter headed. Imagine trying to get in Australia. And they go, yeah, here's my exemption. Uh, well, where, 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 who gave you that? Well, JG and Ben, JG and Ben. You don't know yeah. them, Doctor Ben, Doctor JG. Well, so so would you then blame Djokovic then if he's gone on the basis of just what Tennis Australia has said? Do you think that's not sufficient? Because it's we- it's not just that though, is it? It was backed up by um, sort of a doctor's note from the Victorian. Um, we what he's apparently he's got health we don't, minister, was it? if yeah. i'm honest with you i don't know who apparently he had one some people have said two yeah, or, one. two, two one. or three days ago but it appears to be one at least that's what the yeah. age have said um that uh he had one doctor's note now we don't know whether that's a, an australian doctor a serbian doctor or whatever so at least that's as far as i'm aware unless you know something i don't yeah you, no you've got yegor here saying the state and the tennis federation gave him exemptions um, but yeah. the federal government did not. No. So really, this is a big mess up in America. In oh, America, yeah. Not America, in Australia. Oh, yeah. The fact that they should have all been together yeah. on the same page, understanding with communication what's going on. So they're yes. just feeding back one sort of uh, channel of information rather than this complete mess they've created. Shambles. I think the and, discord. Um, it, people need to be sacked. People, there needs to be massive repercussions here of this it, whole thing. I don't think they can go back on this decision now. I don't think Djokovic really has a leg to stand on in his case, if I'm honest. I think he's going to be deported. And that's just the way it's going to be. I don't, I can't see him winning it from this situation. But really, he's the one who's going to be punished more than anyone. When I still believe there is a, a portion of blame which should be sort of given to him. But he's definitely not the biggest party. And by no way. I feel like he's definitely sort of third on the list. You've got the sort of Tennis Australia right up there. You've then got the government, the federal government, and all yeah. the other mess in Australia. And then him right at the bottom of the list of blame. Well, I think yeah. those two together, though, if you put the, the... I still can't get my head around 
you're setting up a massive sporting event which has players traveling in from other countries during a pandemic. Yes, we know that this is happening. We've known it since the last Australian Open started uh, and finished. So put your plans in place. Speak to the, each other in your own country before giving players the go-ahead to, to travel. Just the federal to government, the of- Ben, the federal government would say that they did speak to Craig Tiley on two separate occasions. And, OK, so if that is the case, what is Craig Tiley up to? And why it's- are you telling players you can travel unvaccinated to the country where you cannot even get past the border force when you get there? Well, listen... Uh, it, where it, is uh, he as well? Do yeah. I have a question? Yeah, I, I agree. Where I agree. is Craig? Well, well let me add. Why have we not heard from him? Where is? Let he? me add a like. You've got the three bodies there. You've got Tennis Australia. Craig Tiley's disappeared for the last forty-eight hours. Okay, um, <laughs> we don't know. Where, maybe he's maybe he's not even allowed to be in the country. I mean, he's a South African citizen. Maybe he's not vaccinated. Who knows? The next um, Bong Shui. Yeah, right. Well, anyway, so then you've also got this discord, if you like, certainly in terms of communication, which is possibly the most interesting one between the state and the government, because actually the the governor, um, Andrews, I forget his first name, he has been, and I first came across him about 12 months ago. Of course, he's been around for much longer than that. But during the Australian Open last year and the build up to it and during it, especially when they had that that lockdown, he was there front of, you know, this guy, Andrews, who's the state governor. He's actually on holiday. He comes back on Monday, by the way, and he's been away for about four weeks. But um. Uh, this 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 call between the government of the federal government and the state government, we actually still aren't much clear on that. I have to say, things have got a lot clearer between Tennis Australia, who I think have taken risks. And and let me let me come back to Craig Tiley, okay? Craig Tiley is somebody who just over a year ago, or about a year ago, when when he was asked about Roger, let's just look at this. He was asked whether Roger Federer would be at the Australian Open, and we all know what a pull Roger Federer would be. Now, he knew full well that Roger Federer had basically one knee and hadn't played for a year. And he said, yeah, yeah, Federer will be here. Don't worry, blah, blah, blah. Of course, everyone goes out and buys tickets and suddenly Federer is not there. And that's why I wasn't even sure when he said a month ago when when he said, oh, yeah, Nadal will be here and blah, blah, blah. And so, I mean, actually, he has got a record even before Federer, because I remember other people speculating about this a couple of years ago, saying that certain people were going to be there and certain things were going to happen. So he is somebody who, Dan Andrews, thank you, yeah. As the Premier of Victoria. So, uh, and Dan, Dan Andrews, by the way, for the last year or two has been very, even more aggressive than Scott Morrison regarding how strict they are and how successful they've been in Melbourne to make sure. Because actually, individually, each state within, you know, Sydney can have their lockdown, but it may well be different in Melbourne and so on and so forth. Um, and Melbourne's actually suffered even more in terms of lockdowns than other, any other city in Australia. So, anyway, back to this Craig Tiley guy. You know, he does. He does like to chance things. And at, at the moment, all we can say is where we are right now. Now, this Craig Tiley, if he wants to come out, if he wants to come on GTL, he, we're here for him. Yeah, he can come on and give us his side. But where we are right now is Craig Tiley is basically um, we know that he was told on two separate occasions that uh, being testing positive is not enough. Now, Craig Tiley may have his side of things, but whatever that side is, he's keeping he's keeping counsel right now. But we've seen the letters where he's been told that. Yeah, that's right. Um, and he's, at the end out. of the day, Craig Tiley's a little rat. He's not come out for a reason uh, because he knows he's guilty in some regard. I think it's a matter of time until it's sort of announced in the sort of the public domain. That's what I, my view on it. We don't know that. For he fact. may well have deceived. He may well have deceived Novak. May well have done. Let's find out. Let's see what Djokovic has to say. Yeah, oh, it just I'll... doesn't look good. Let's keep going through some of the tweets. No, this is gonna... uh, yeah, I'll let you take take us through this. Yeah, it was just like the letter from the Minister of Health. This was the one that was written to Craig Tiley. This was from Greg Hunt, as you can see uh, at the top there. So this one, I'm not going to take you through like all of the uh, all of the stuff on here. Obviously, it's a massive letter, but this is the one that was received. And look, you can see the dated 29th of November here at the top. So he's had this letter for quite some time, uh, and we're still in the situation we're in for some reason. But... Shall I bring up some of the, well, the key quotes from Greg Hunt's letter rather than go through the whole thing? Yeah. Uh, I can confirm that people who contracted COVID-19 within the past six months and seek to enter Australia from overseas and have not received two doses of the uh, Therapeutic Goods Administration approved or recognized vaccine are not considered fully vaccinated. Right. So moving down, I don't know. Do you want to take the second point? 
Yeah, the Australian Border Force has advised that people must be fully vaccinated uh, as defined by ATAGI, which is the National Ad Advisory Body on Vaccines, to gain quarantine-free entry uh, into Australia. I encourage sporting organisations, including Tennis Australia, to continue to work with the Australian Border Force, state and territory health authorities and venues on COVID safe plans for events, including for international travel where there is relevant. So he's talking about yeah. events here as well. So if you go down, Ben, I think there might be a little bit more. No, I think that's all we've oh. got on. They're, they're the key quotes anyway. Yeah. The the It's pretty much self-explanatory, isn't it? I don't yeah. think yeah. you couldn't write in more black and white, I don't think. yeah. If you just go and, to the tab next to you, Ben, on the left, I think sure. that is from where it's from. Is that from the same article? Yes. Yeah. It's, well, if you go to the, the bottom, sorry. Uh, it might be. Oh, no, it's not page. the article. I think no, it's not on an actual page, is it? So if you just go off this page thing altogether. Okay, apologies. Press the X at the top right. Gotcha. Sorry, apologies. It's all good. And there then go. scroll down to the bottom. Let me just so where it says them points where we just went. Sorry for this. Bit of dead air. It's a long old article. It's interesting. I'll pop this article actually in the... Uh, yeah, we'll in, put it in, in the, the description because it is a good read. It sort of brings you up to date with everything. Sorry, all the way down to the bottom where we have his top points. Sort of the, yeah, the this is main it, points. Uh, these are his top points from his letter. Do you want me oh, to keep okay. going? Yeah, I thought it was at the bottom. Right at the bottom. I, I can keep going down. I'm not sure if there is anything uh, oh, okay. more, more on there, this. Maybe it was on the phone. I, I don't see it now, but it doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway. they were sort of just sort of going into more detail about what he was saying and how sort of big events it was sort of tailored to the Australian Open rather than just general rules as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's it's pretty crazy to be honest that uh, it's been allowed to happen considering the, he had prior notice. He's had a, he's had over a month. It's just how is this how's this been able to happen uh let's pull up some more of the tweets that were going through i just had that one up yeah, whilst quickly, you while you're doing that i just want to bring this comment up as well from omar uh, listen it. i am pro-vax and i'm critical of nola's choices uh but there awesome. is its own issue what is happening here is a failure of communication between the different australian authoritative bodies i think that's just spot on and yeah. this is not really a discussion anymore about being pro-vax or anti-vax no. or anything to do with that because that's another that's, that is another debate in its own self you could argue what rafa said was completely correct and to the point uh, but this is not really related to this specific thing if you're talking about what rafa said about the fact that if Djokovic just simply got vaccinated then he could have played anyway wouldn't have all of this thing but this is not really to do with the the situation we're currently in no it doesn't it's, i mean it's an, it's another complete uh, discussion about vaccines it's not about it's, this is about would Djokovic have travelled had he known prior or seen that letter maybe. If he'd have been sent a copy of that letter, I bet he wouldn't have travelled. If his lawyers had seen a copy of that, I bet he wouldn't have gone anywhere. He might have just... We, we do need to ask the question, what happens next though, Ben? Because I can't imagine all of these other tournaments are going to be very relaxed with uh, vaccines. It's going to be the mm. same kind of rules there as well. If yeah. he's not able to get an exemption here, what makes you think he's going to get the exemption at the French or Wimbledon or in yes. America or all even some of the masters he wants to try and defend his points? It's going to be the same story for all of them. So awesome. as a tennis player who travels all around the globe and he's someone who's openly now, we, we know, because there's been so many people saying he's not against vaccines. He, he would take one. We don't know that. I think we pretty much know now he doesn't want to take a vaccine. So therefore, what does that mean for jo Novak Djokovic's career? He gets deported, say, from, from here and has to go home. Does that mean then he, he can't play tennis? He can only play in select countries, which allow him in without a vaccine? I think that What do you think, be... John? Well, I, I have um... to say, regarding, it's kind of, that answering that question is kind of second-guessing what will happen in the virus in the next one month, one year, even decade to, to some extent. And, and so I guess what there are a million possibilities and one possibility, which may be a very, very optimistic one, but it still has to be considered is that let's say in the next few months that that Omicron and, and, and the vaccinations that we've already got. I mean, I think this is where the 30 percent. And as I say, we're not going to be here to talk about pro-vax or anti-vax, but the 30 percent that are not vaccinated, let's say, in, in many Western countries are maybe hoping that we can get to a situation where we've got enough people vaccinated and that the, the, the disease or the virus becomes weak enough that it's not going to be a problem and that actually the world may come back to some sort of normality. We may have to wear masks, but if you had, for example, who knows whether New York in nine months from now 
might accept being you know infected in the previous six to 12 months or might accept a negative test or I'm, I'm, I'm this is probably an optimistic view but you it's 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 extremely open, but it's, it's possible that New York in September will say you just need to take a negative test or you just need to have had the, the virus in the last 12 months. I mean, I have no idea. I've made a thousand yeah. predictions regarding this virus in the last 12 months or two years and probably 999 have come to be incorrect or not true. Um, yeah. The only thing I would, would probably say if you want to include this as a virus thing is I, is I think we all saw some issues in the last four weeks at least, but as that letterhead suggests more and even – October's comments that it did seem fairly clear in October that you needed to be fully vaccinated to get to enter Australia. And I know I know I have Australian friends in the last two years that couldn't go home at all because actually even fully vaccinated didn't didn't mean anything until a few months ago. So I don't think this is the the the, the, the what we want to hear from Craig Tiley. Craig Tiley, yeah. uh, come on, come on, GTL, and tell us what you think. <laughs> yeah, exclusive. Oh, Craig Tiley, man up. You've created this mess. You're the CEO. You, that comes with responsibility. Yeah. I'm sure he gets paid a lot of money. I don't mm. get paid that much, that amount of money. He gets paid a lot of money to do his job. Do your job properly and face the music. You can't just face the music when everything's good and be there to give uh, the, the winner the trophy and be, yeah, exactly. oh, I'm going to pop the champagne. It's all good now. I'm going to take the photos and be the king of Australia. No, you need to be there when there's times are tough as well. That's Man the up. job. That's why you get paid so much money. Man up and show your face and talk to the people. Because ultimately, it seems to me it's his fault we're in this whole thing. He allowed for the whole exemption thing to be part of a thing when he knew that it wasn't even a thing because we had from uh, Mr. Hunt, is it? Yeah, Greg um, Hunt. Greg, Greg Hunt saying the fact that you're not allowed to enter the country under them under that kind of exemption. But still, yeah. he pushed forward and allowed not just Djokovic, these other players as well. I know we're not talking about these other players, but maybe we should because they're in the same conditions as Novak Djokovic. And yeah. so's a lot of other people in these same conditions which hopefully a lot of people are going to be talking about now because there's so many people in these sort of detention hotels. I saw there was one case of, of an individual there being held for eight years. Yeah. And, this, yeah. and the conditions are shocking. So maybe it opens a lot of people's eyes about the conditions which these poor people are in. Yeah. By the way, they, those guys are prisoners. I mean, they first yeah. of all, they've fled war-torn countries. And secondly, they don't can't go anywhere pretty much. Mm. Yeah, um another, so that that's, that's another that's, horrible one though isn't it Those, yes i don't know if you've got any tweets about that ben i definitely did share some maybe we'll go and talk about that now because well i'll let john share what he knows about it but i mm. agree they they certainly are prisoners they don't have the financial freedom to be able to even make any improvements to this as much as it's really bad for Djokovic, there's people in these conditions where it, it can't get any better and it's not going to improve and i hope people are going to talk about it and oh it's the saddest thing in life but until someone of sort of a celebrity name or status goes through it, that's the only time when anyone really talks about any issues. True. And then they'll actually see all the other people who have been sac who have been suffering all this time anyway. It's true. I've, I'm just one this point. This is the same with everything in life. I've noticed. This is a good uh, yeah, one. Yeah, it's, yeah, money talks at the end of the day. Uh, I think Craig Tiley, I think we're not even focusing on the whole thing as well. Have you seen how much how many disgruntled people there are in the whole of Australia now due to this whole thing. It's not just upset uh, the people who are fans of tennis. This is upset a whole country of people. Uh, and it's down to him making a terrible decision to just go on a whim and try and get superstars into his country who haven't been vaccinated. I mean, yeah. it is, I don't know. Is it a crime against humanity? I don't know. I'll let up other people decide that, but it's definitely something a bit underhanded going on there. If he's had prior knowledge and now he's upsetting nearly the entire world, which is ridiculous. This is this is where we're at, really, and this is a, a great tweet to show that it also it does appear at, at the moment until we hear from Craig Tiley. Maybe there's a reason. There's something like I, right now. I can't see what it could be, but that that previous tweet you showed there from the acting Sorry. state uh, premier. Um, uh, yes, uh, into Allen, yeah, who's obviously in the in the shoes of Andrews while he's away until Monday. Uh, she said that actually Tyler didn't tell us. And and what this reminds me of, by the way, is 
you know those situations when you're sort of you're in trouble whether you're a kid and you're stolen a cookie and you hope you're going to get away with it or your 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 car is running out of petrol or fuel and you think i'm just i'm going to get there i think i'll get there and you sort of hope you'll get there or you know all these sort of situations that happen in life and you you sort of hopefully you're you're going to get away with it as a blagger or a chancellor and at the moment craig tiley is 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 not looking good yeah, let's really move on not. to some other reactions. I know we had Kyrgios there. A lot <laughs> of people know the relationship between Kyrgios and, and Djokovic isn't the best one. You'd anticipate him to really go against him. Um, sorry, did I cut out or did you hear me? No, you're fine. Oh, sorry, I just lagged. But but in fact, he didn't. He's sort of supporting Djokovic here. He said, look, I definitely believe in taking action. I got vaccinated because of others and for my mum's health. But how we are handling Novak situation is bad, really bad. Like these memes, headlines. This is the one of our great champions, but at the end of the day, he is human. Do better. Uh, Nick Kyrgios there, call, calling for the <laughs> government to do better and treat people with more respect. It's like, he's, sound? it's like he's marking the homework of, 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 of the Australian government there. Must do yeah. better. Well, I think he's. I think he's. Yeah, C talking to the, do better. He's talking to the world as well. He's not just talking to the government. He's just. The people, I think he's talking to people creating memes and things like this about him as well. Like almost like he is now the voice of reason. All of a sudden, Kyrgios, who has always been the biggest troll, obviously, of people like Djokovic, now complete U turn. I was surprised and, by this. I was surprised. Yeah, I am as well. But still, I, think it I shows like the severity of this whole thing. He's whole human issue. too. Yeah. Yeah, let's, well, let's move on. I know we've got so many tweets. Let's I, get. I mean, a actually, few what more. we have, what we have seen in the last, I think, more the last few hours is actually he is a popular guy, Djokovic. I mean, as you say, I mean, maybe yeah. not necessarily kiosks, but he, you know, here's one, as you say, from the from the PTPA. Sorry, yeah, no, I let you to speak about this, John. Yeah, no, I mean, this is obviously him and Djokovic and uh, Pospisil kind of co-founded this this federation, if you're a players' association. A, it was the U S open in 2020 when they sort of had that image of them all on the court. And this is in a way, it's kind of like a rival association to the ATP. I say rival, let's just say they kind of potentially could overlap what the PTPA want as a body. They want to see a slightly more favorable outcome for the really lower ranked players. If you like, it's like a, it's almost like a, a workers union that are looking out for the interests of, and this is something that, you know, there's so many strands to Mr. Djokovic that that um that and this is arguably a very positive one is that he does tend to look out for some of the guys that are lower ranked. He's the ones that he's one of the guys that wanted them to get better conditions, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And of course, this is obviously given by the PTPA, which Djokovic co-founded along with Pospisil. So unsurprisingly, it obviously is a very um you know a very positive one for Djokovic and they look back to look forward to seeing him back on court very soon but you know the, what this shows is you this is why you've seen many players you know arguably Zverev in particular but but to some extent and don't forget those comments from Zverev by the way about a month ago as well when when he yeah. said um you know I want to I want to see him there and he's kind of said that again and we've seen that from from John Isner to some extent obviously Tennis Sangren who's obviously not at the Australian Open uh, Pospisil himself has tweeted as, as we saw earlier and there's more players that are now coming out saying listen he, he's a good guy he's my friend I'd like to see him there you know um, the longer and- this goes on the more people we're going to see come out I feel I think some people are sort of scared to speak out but we're going to oh, see sure. definitely more people say things because they're just worried about themselves everyone's always worried about themselves uh, what about they backlash? Yeah, yeah it's not they don't worth want it a backlash for some of like if you've got a whole lot of people it's a very divisive subject where at the moment it, it puts everybody against everybody. And as soon as you go and Unfortunately, support... it's so political. It, it's not, it's, it's just horrible. a political thing. And I just, it's not nice to even be discussing something so political on a podcast because you'll upset people. Yeah. Uh, you can't really have a discussion about politics without upsetting anyone. Uh, no, but let's move on sides. to the next tweet. So this yes. one is Neil Clark. Uh, solidarity with Novak Djokovic, the world's best tennis player who's being held in a detention centre in the world's largest prison camp. Um, I didn't know that. It's the world's largest, the one in, in Australia. What, is he just talking no, about... Is this, I think he's is talking about Australia. Australia, because we used to send the criminals there, I think. That's just probably why he's saying. Oh, OK. Understood. <laughs> uh, there must be... I was going to say, I didn't, I didn't know that. There must be repercussions for Australia for the way the authorities there are behaving... 
and have been behaving, sort of bringing up a big thing, boycott Australia. I've seen a lot of people saying the same thing. Yeah. Are we going to start seeing a boycott of Australia? Is there going to be players who are there now think, you know what, I'm not going to play in this event. I've had enough of the way Craig Taylor's acted. I'm not going to play. Are they going to miss out on, which is a Grand Slam, their best opportunity to make money? They, they, they're, they're sort of bread and butter for the year. What they rely on as a professional, would they put that at risk to stand up for something like this? Or is it not worth it for them? By the way, there's somebody in the chat. I love this. It says, no Dominic team. I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's sort yeah, of... You always get some funny people in the chat. Try and keep it lighthearted, guys. We don't want too much about um, offending people or attacking anyone. Yeah. I've seen some people sort of arguing in there. Try and refrain from that as much as possible. Well, Dominic team sort of managed to ex nearly exclude himself from the argument, hasn't he, a little bit? He's just... I've not really heard his name uttered really at all, but maybe he'll come out in, uh, in support or something at some point. We don't know. Let's move on through these anyway, because we've got so many to get through. Oh, look, Who's this it? one. You can you can read this one. Yeah, uh, as... so this is obviously Karen Andrews, Andrews, as I highlighted before, basically responding to Djokovic's father, who's come out with some very uh, stern comments, and his, his mother too, um, basically saying that he's being held prisoner, and, and she's responding to that by saying, listen, he is free to leave as and when he wants. Um, arguably, he could even have gone back to Dubai during this period, uh, although that may well weaken his case, I guess. So, therefore, he stayed there. But, yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at, really. And, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, next one. Next that's one. John Silk talking. Yeah. I don't know who he is. <laughs> Not even verified. He managed, him to do, on again. managed to do his... <laughs> <laughs> managed to do his voice very well as well. Impressed. It sounded just <laughs> like him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, very good. I mate. leave the voices to Ben. Ah, oh, cheers. Uh, How much did I'll... John pay us to put his tweet up there anyway? I want to yeah, know. That's a, that's, a, that's a good point. Let's get back I'm, up there. I'm gaining about five <laughs> followers a day. I don't know if that's because of you guys or actually I've had a couple of tweets go viral actually. Oh, yeah, well, nice. go follow John if you haven't uh, seen. Exactly. He always, obviously knows all about his tennis as always tweeting. Let's move on. Uh, Paul Sackle again. I feel yep. like we've touched on this one. That's the guy. That's there. the guy. To, to be honest with you, I'm, 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 listen, a real shout out to this guy and, and the age. I mentioned him a bit earlier. This is the guy. I couldn't think of his name. He was on the Ben Rothenberg podcast yeah. this morning. But I knew it was Paul. This, I couldn't think of the surname. Yeah, this this story is moving so quickly, but um, but he's pretty much the guy to follow on Twitter regarding this story right now. I would say. Yeah, it looks yep. like good, and he's just talking obviously about the the. He'll be banned from entering. Can be. Well, that's a good. But look at that. Can, can yeah. be banned. Yeah, nicely worded. Yeah, we did speak about that on the last one as well. <laughs> uh, we don't know. It's another no. speculation. But potentially, Djokovic, if he is to be deported, could be uh, banned for three years. Let's just wait and see with that. That would be pretty uh, sad if it is to be the case. Um, yep. We've this got. Well, this is this is an interesting one against sort of some of what Djokovic's family have been doing. I, I wonder what you guys think. Mm. Not criticizing Djokovic's family, anyone would be worried in the same situation. But it certainly makes you think about the far worse conditions faced by others in immigration mm. detention. Oh no, sorry, it's not this tweet. It's another tweet. Um, this one's just replying to. This is about the conditions. It was really interesting because the conditions others face in immigration detention centers around the world. This is the one I wanted to talk about earlier. How many people are really genuinely really suffering and no one talks about it at all? You Until had Novak Djokovic is there, then we talk about it. Yeah, I mean, you had this really um, unusual sort of juxtaposition between the two uh, groups outside the hotel, you know, with, with the, because actually there's actually uh, people going there on the behalf of the refugees on a daily basis for the last decade or so. And now suddenly there's the, and, and, and this, no, I haven't actually, as I say, we, the guy, the guys um, protesting outside the parliament in Serbia, I think it was a different nature to that, that protest, if you like. But actually the, the, the ones outside the, the Djokovic hotel, which I think is partly some of the people that Djokovic is speaking to with his, with his message today are actually fairly, you know, you know, just giving him as much support as they possibly can. And, and, um, but you've got this unusual combination of these two groups that have now suddenly come together. Um, they're not necessarily against each other, but they've got very different reasons for being outside that hotel, as this tweet highlights. Yeah, there's always people like this in these type of situations. Sometimes people are there in gen genuine solidarity, and some people just like an occasion just to go to, just to like to protest something. So hopefully the people there supporting him are all genuine, though. Right. 
And then we've got Sky News. He's not in detention. He's in prison. Uh, words of Novak Djokovic's father, Serjan, uh, saying uh, the Australian government have humiliated his son and kept him imprisoned with all his stuff being taken, including his wallet. Which I'm I think not sure. that was during the questioning at the airport. That's that's how I see that. Now, um, although he does say he's in prison, I think he's he may have had his wallet taken while he was. And and but there is some conflicting reports about the phone. Some people say he kept his phone. Yeah. I mean, he does seem even when he was actually. Uh, it seems like when he was actually being questioned by the police, he did speak to the president of Serbia. I think on two occasions during that time at the airport. Yeah. Where where I think there is a, a a point, if you like, you cannot open the windows of the hotel. OK, they are wow. sealed. So, yeah, they, they and then, uh, yeah, that's that's that's, that's and it is tough right. going. But you've got to understand and I want to reiterate this. This is not just because it's Novak Djokovic. They all are in these same yeah. conditions. Yeah, Everyone. Yeah. It's an even playing field. They've treated him as a human being going through these conditions. I'm not saying it's right. It's very bad. And hopefully people can look at these conditions and yes. amend them for future for in the future for all these other people going through it. But you can't look at this and say, oh, Novak Djokovic being treated differently is because he's world number one. They're trying to make him, uh, they're humiliating him more, more than anyone else. There's people in there, I'm sure, getting humiliated just as much, if not worse, because nobody even knows about it. No, and he's now gone. This is from... just what we know. Imagine well, all the stuff we don't know. Five star living. Now he's in one star hotel. Uh, so it's probably not been in one of those for quite some time. And unfortunately I, there's part of me when you can't have windows open and stuff like that if the conditions are that bad then you can you can develop some sort of illnesses in these sort of confined confined spaces as well there's mold there's things like that that you shouldn't be locked away in a room with so hopefully the conditions aren't as bad as that but if he's got bugs all crawling around his room and stuff as well it doesn't sound great and hopefully this shines a light like you said on the conditions and they can improve them for everybody else this isn't just yeah. Novak Djokovic yeah let's keep moving on uh, Benjamin Locke I believe he's another tennis player if Novak was denied his exemption he wouldn't have gone uh, gone to US no to, to I keep saying US to Oz <laughs> uh, he was legally approved by rules put in place by an exemption yet when he arrived those same people blocked his entry and publicly humiliated him this is no way to treat anyone let alone your nine time champion so another player sticking up for him pretty much what we've said uh, keep going through these yeah I mean I think that one sort of hits the nail on the head a bit like there and it's like Tylee your best mate one second when he's on the court giving you the trophy and now it's probably one of his worst enemies it's I would think so uh, Justin uh, well I don't think it's Justin this was obviously at 1041 Australian authorities uh, detain oh, they, we spoke about this Renata Volachova uh, the Czech tennis player uh, after she'd already been playing in the warm up event um, which is pretty crazy. We already touched on that. Uh, this is Ben Rothenberg. Uh, you know what the, would have solved all of this? If the Australian Open just didn't allow exemptions from its mandatory vaccine policy. That was always an option. Said so Tennis Australia tried to paint shades of grey into their rules and the resulting splatter made the whole thing look a complete mess. Uh, I have to agree with you there. Ben Rothenberg, he's sometimes very controversial, but it's pretty black and white what he's written there. Yeah, that's, a, that's, where, that's certainly where we're at. I mean, like I say, maybe tiley has got a reason for some of this and he's got some, we've certainly got some questions to answer. Definitely. He has seemed to definitely paint shades of grey, Craig, hasn't he? Oh. He's tried some little work yeah. around loophole, what doesn't exist. He thought, I don't know how stupid you can be, though, where you think you could be able to get away with something like that. And, like, when he gets there, it's all going to be tickety-boo and he's going to be allowed in. Yep. I, I think what he thought is the government maybe didn't have the backbone to, to turn away Novak Djokovic and he would maybe be able to get, allowed to get away with it through that route. There's uh, a once chance. He's there. They're not going to do that. But, of course, he, he knows. They're the strictest, it is the strictest border you can get right now with COVID. It doesn't get any stricter, Australia. There's a, there's a chance. There. There's a chance. He may have been caught off guard by the by the social media post from um, Djokovic on Tuesday. There's a chart. I'm not saying that that, that, that that's the case, um, but there's a possibility that he was thinking that we can maybe keep this as low-key as possible 
Um, but he wasn't aware of the fact that Djokovic was going to post what he posted on Tuesday, um, which kind of, you know, again, potentially caught the... Os- well, certainly, yeah, I don't certainly buy that. Did- uh, maybe not. I don't but... buy that at all because the reason I say that no. that can't happen, John, is because in an interview when he's at the thing, basically he would have then been told by Tennis Australia, "We're going to give you this exemption. Just don't mention it." Surely that would have been the, the first thing they would have said because, no, because he's I always think... going to say it otherwise. Yeah, I, I think I think he's going to leave it up to Djokovic and take that chance because I think once you say that, it's almost like offering the bribe to the policeman, if you like. So rather than rather than uh, say it like that, they just leave it. But I think he may have been hoping that Djokovic then wasn't going to say anything and then just see what happens when Djokovic... Now, again, this is... Don't know. Does that make any difference? Well, what, what I would suggest is that Djokovic post does mean that... Uh, the Australian government say what they say in the in the sort of 15, 20 hours while Djokovic is in the air. Because whether Djokovic would have got in the country, whether we'd be in exactly the same position, quite possibly we would be. But what doesn't happen in the 15, 20 hours, if Djokovic doesn't post anything on social media and just gets on a plane, you don't see um, Scott Morrison giving a press conference, getting questions about will Djokovic be allowed to in the, in the country? And he doesn't say Mr. Djokovic has to follow the rules and he'll be on the next plane home. You wouldn't get that, um, almost certainly that press conference, and they, those questions don't happen yeah. if Djokovic yeah. has made that post. Now, that doesn't mean that Djokovic doesn't end up having the same problem. And in fact, we don't know anything about it. As far as we're concerned, he's still in Serbia. And the next thing we know, you know, he's he's we hear us break a new story that he's stuck in a hotel because of, of what's gone on. Well, but every, um, every, ra- every action has a reaction. And I think that's what you're trying to allude to there, John. If he didn't do the initial action, then all it's done is we just had this chain reaction of everybody reacting to that one moment. And it was we were all waiting for it. We were sat there with bated breath. We were like, when is the post coming? Yeah. Something's coming soon. And when it came, it did what it, we thought. The world exploded. And then he was on a plane for like 20 hours. And he it's almost like he went, send, and then off into the sky. And then let the whole world just I don't know, explode around like, underneath him. Well, there was, was a funny cr- meme, wasn't there, of Djokovic <laughs> posting the p- thing, and then there's a, a, a house behind him, yeah. sort of behind a tree, and the house is just on fire. Uh, <laughs> he was like, he was he was meditating, wasn't he? He was out in front yeah. of it. Just yeah. just quickly on a more sour note, I just want to address some of the chat because there has been some racist incidents. I want to announce we do not tolerate that whatsoever uh, at no, all. Please, please do not come to the that. channel. You have been blocked. You're not allowed back. Uh, we have a no tolerance policy on any kind of racism, and I just want to clear that up now. Yeah, well said, mate. Any more incidents, you'll be blocked. That's it. Right. So let's move on to the next tweet anyway. While we uh, have that break, so it's from uh, Shivani Gupta saying, Whether you like him or not, whether you agree with his vaccine stance, one thing is clear. What's happened with uh, Novak Djokovic is hardly a matter related to this. He did not ask for the rules to be bent. Politicians in Australia and uh, ill-informed people are acting like he did. So, yeah, they want him there. Like that's the, the the long and short of it. They want him in the country to play in Australia because ultimately the Australian Open will sell thousands of tickets if he's there. Yeah. So let's move on. Move on. This one. Do you want to tackle this? Um. Uh, t- t- anyway, to players, I think we've talked, spoke yeah. about the email, what was sent out. We've done a lot of these. We're probably going to keep seeing things. We've gone through the leaked document. A lot of this is going to be repeated now. Yeah. Flick back uh, to the I'm beginning honest. of the video if you want to check out where we're uh, reviewing some of the stuff from the, the letter and stuff. Uh, this is uh, about the, the Czech player as well. Then we've got, ah, oh, then we're on to something which is. Uh, Non Djokovic related, but sad to see Talon Greek Spore pull out of his match with Rafa. Uh, and Rafa just got a walkover against him. So I'll keep going through anyway. This one, I think, is a meme, is it? Is this one? Yeah. On any other Let's day, that would, be, that would be a big story in a way, a tennis yeah. story. But, yeah. I know. So yeah. we got to... We'll talk about yeah. Rafa at the end on Greek Spore, but let's yeah. focus on this one. Team Djokovic has made an appeal saying they have misunderstood the communication from Australia. Apparently, they read. No one is above the rules, uh, as number one is above the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, a bit of a silly meme. Uh, there has been some funny things trying to make light heart, light heart of the situation, but it's not really a very funny situation w- w- which we find ourselves in, if I'm honest. But 
There's, you've got to smile sometimes through, 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 the, through the bar. In, I think this is always an opportunity for any like major controversy. Is always an opportunity for a comedian or someone with a comedy bone in them to try and make something creative. And I think that's just what the, the world is. And they, people try to make light of things just to try and give people something to laugh about in times yeah. of despair I, I mean i have no problem with with some of the pictures of of um federer being the put you know the border force control telling Djokovic to go home or, or some of these i mean ultimately we're not uh, as much as Djokovic's father would like to tell us otherwise you know he's going to be okay it's not like he doesn't know where he's going to be eating next week or or, or wherever he's going to be he's going to be exactly. back He's going. He's either going to be on a court in Melbourne, or he's uh, staying in a very nice situation. Uh, and good luck to him if that happens. Or he's going to be on the next plane home. But it, it's, you know. So therefore, these jokes, you know, they are jokes. We don't really. If you really think Roger Federer is the. By the way, there will be one or two people that may well believe some of these pictures. But <laughs> I don't think they do. But I, I wouldn't be surprised. There is some some crazy people in this world. Uh, this is another funny one. People making fun of Djokovic have no idea how tennis works. We send him back to Serbia, they send him back to us, and so and so forth until one of us misses, and that's the point. <laughs> I saw Ryanair as well trying to get in on the act with a with a with a thing saying, you know, we'll send you a plane, etc. I don't think they go that far even, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh moving on. This is just Sasser again. He's been brilliant as well. Shout out to him. He's uh put a message out yeah, saying well how done, he's mate. struggling really to deal with with all of the requests from people and so many people asking him questions, but he has been working tired, tirelessly through this whole <laughs> saga to keep all of us updated. And this is just pretty much what we was talking about, how uh, after the federal government had notified Tennis Australia and right in November that a prior infection did not meet the requirements for quarantine-free travel. So they gave the wrong information, sorry, to the players. So it's a complete yes. mess up. It's not looking good for Australia, this. Gives no, you, but you a little inclination that maybe does Djokovic stand a chance in his case? At I all? think this is an interesting tweet. Obviously, it's it's uh, from a Serbian journalist who has given us lots of, of good info in the last forty eight hours, seventy two hours. But this is kind of moving a bit more to a to um not accepting defeat, but a, certainly it's a, it's a little bit more like okay, this is not maybe going in the direction that we thought it was seventy two hours ago. At least this is a this is the first thing I've seen in a way that's kind of. If we're there's wrong information been given around, then there's some kind of mess up which happened in Australia, and that's official. Djokovic surely then has some grounds mm, for a very strong. I, but case, if it's right? tennis Australia, then if it's tennis then, Australia, not really, then they'll be up to black for. If it's the Australian government, if it's the federal government, very much so, and that's yeah, probably I what agree. the lawyers are desperately looking for. If it's a local government, not much. If it's tennis Australia, well, you know. But then there should be repercussions then for Tennis Australia, right? Absolutely, but it doesn't. And how mean severe would they be? Oh, we'd be looking at we'd be looking at Craig Tidy. I would say Snap on the wrist. to to leave his role, but probably after the Australian Open. Although arguably a lot of his work will have been done. Mm. To be fair, I mean, unlike the the other guy who's in charge of, of of certain protocols, you know, once the Australian Open gets underway, it's another two weeks of potential things going on. But uh, by then, if if he's done his job, at least in terms of that, then he, everything should be in place. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would, I mean, we wouldn't see him quit mid tournament, but we may well see him go at the end of the tournament. Good, nice one. But that, <laughs> that's, I mean, who knows? He may have some very, very, very good answers to some very tough questions. Uh, I hope so. Like we just like to hear them. Yeah, let's wait and see. This is the last and one. There's another player here. What's happening in tennis right now is wild. Although I agree with getting vaccinated, a few players have said started with that line, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, revoking someone's visa who's already entered the country and played a match is crazy. The rules needed to be clearer from the beginning. This is a huge bungle. And of course, she's not talking about Djokovic. Um, nope. She's talking about the doubles player um, yeah. who has been sent packing after playing a match already in Australia and being let in under the same conditions as Djokovic. It's crazy. Volachova, yeah. That's yep. just just crazy. I mean, that that one is even crazier it's than damning. the Djokovic it's one. Damning. That yep. one that one is more crazy, if anything. Like that one, if she was a bigger name, that would make much more headlines than the Agreed. Djokovic one. But it just is what it is, unfortunately. I'm just hoping 
that she gets the same treatment as Novak Djokovic. Now, though, uh, obviously, he has a lot more funds in the bank than she probably does uh, to fight his case. So hopefully he goes first and finds out what he can do. And then if there's a good case, then she'll know whether what to make her decision and whether she just goes home or whether she uh, tries to make an appeal. So, yeah, we've got yeah. Clinton there quickly, just addressing you, John, uh, before you say that, Ben. Quarantine free does not equal no entry if that was their wording. No one would assume someone uh, could enter with a quarantine. Yeah, I don't know what that's referring yeah. to. Um, I'm not sure. it, 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 it's, maybe, the, maybe, the, maybe they know something we don't. Is there something about, um, about entering but with quarantine or something? Well, quarantine there was another free. thing I know Vance was telling me earlier about if you were to enter under the exemption. Um, it was allowed as uh, considering that you was doing it while quarantining as well okay. on top of I mean, it. Uh, there's these mm. two things there. First of all, where would that, where's that coming from? Is that, is that coming from somewhere? Is that speculation? Is that someone on Twitter? Now this may be very, very, maybe a really good, um, you know, source on that. And I'd love to, to read more about that. And, but I couldn't really comment on that side of things. What I would say is though, if, if there was some notion or idea that they, that he could stable with a quarantine, well, we're looking at 10 days till the tournament starts. And almost certainly um, he wasn't aware, Djokovic wasn't aware of that uh, a couple of days ago because he was like, let's go. Um, I've got an exemption, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and Craig Tiley has not mentioned anything. And Craig Tiley has been one of the people saying he's coming, he's exempted. Um, so I've not aware of that. I don't think if that is where we're at now then that's that's completely new and uh, i don't think anybody knew that about that three days ago he said it was from the tweet from the guy who was busy uh or he's also, yeah the, the the serbian reporter ben oh uh, okay uh but yeah. I, 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 I i i we did speak about this just no before. the most it's a recent one ben the one the one we've just done um yeah yeah like this one is it yeah, it, yeah. TA has given okay no, in November did not meet the quant yeah right I mean basically it's kind of saying what we said in 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 November that that quarantine free as far as so tennis Australia are saying yeah you can come and you don't need to quarantine if you've had a an, uh, you know COVID in the last six months well we now know that as far as the federal government's concerned is not the case okay let's move on anyway Ben over to you yes man no, just a quick just summary big thank you uh, to everyone who joined us great to see so many people in the live chat apologies for some of the more uh well some of the nasty incidents and some of the racism we do not tolerate that at all shout out to john as well for keeping us up to speed with everything what's happening and yeah uh we'll be keeping you up to date with all any new announcements what happens obviously we're on novak Djokovic watch 24 <laughs> 7 so this is the podcast and the place to be to find out all the most recent news. Make sure if you haven't already and you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Like this video as well. It really does help us out. Uh, but for now, we're going to love you and leave you uh, and see you on the next one. See you later, guys. See you.